All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Arena Football Statement. It's been a while. It's been cold. <laughs> and, uh, man, there's got to be some pretty tough criteria to get me to back in the studio to actually have an interview. But this guy that I'm interviewing today is actually the first person I've ever interviewed on this show. Welcome back, Speedy Clark. How you doing, buddy? Man, I'm doing good. How you doing today? Last we talked, you were a player, and now you're a coach? Yes, sir. Congrats on that. That's amazing. I, I got to say, there's there's a couple things I'm really, really excited about. Not just that you're a coach, but the particular team that you're the coach of. Back in uh, 2021, uh, there was never an announcement that the Cedar Rapids River Kings were not coming back, but uh -huh. they're back now. Man, I, I was a huge, huge fan of the Cedar Rapids River Kings. And when I got the news that Darren Speedy Clark was going to be the head coach of the Cedar Rapids River Kings, I almost fell off my chair. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. That's like a, that's like, that's like having a, a steak burger with extra steak. I love it. Is this your first year coaching? Yes, this is my first year coaching and being a general manager of our arena football team. But I've been coaching eighth grade football in Illinois. So as far as indoor slash arena football is concerned, this is your first coaching gig. Is that correct? Yes, sir. I so retired in 2022 after playing in Orlando, set out a year in 2023 and got my mind right getting ready to coach. So I'm here now ready to get it rolling. So how does that work? Doesn't Don't most players have to like uh, be, in your case, a wide receivers coach first for a couple of years, get their feet wet? I mean, how does a guy go from – from really fast receiver to head coach that quick. Yeah, because when I was playing, I was like the coach on the field. So everybody seen that in me when I was a player. Like when we were in practice, players used to ask me how to run certain routes, how to get open, blocking, everything like that. So everything just rolled over into me being a coach. I, and I spoke it into existence. So I, I told myself when I get out here, I was going to be one of the best coaches in arena football because I know the game in and out. And I know how to be a great man on and off the field and I'm ready to be a leader. That's actually a really, really good point because you really can't be a great coach without being a great man first. How much does your transition from a player to coach make you go, OK, I've got to be more disciplined. I've got to uh, have a better routine. How, how much does that play into it in order for you to be a good coach? Yeah, coaching these kids back in Illinois, that was one of the things that got me patient. Because, you know, kids, they're kind of like a little tougher than older men. Because, you know, when you're a grown man, you're supposed to know what to do on and off the field, how to be a man on and off the field. So, you know, coaching these kids, being a mentor to them, it helped me out a lot. I was able to, like, show them how to be great teammates, find a purpose, learn playbooks and learn how to play together and just understand it's a thing I call the three C's, confidence, competition, and compete all day. So that's one of the main things that I, I put in my players' head. The three C's? I like that. Yeah. I'm going to have to put that in my repertoire. See, you're coaching me already. Yeah. <laughs> Are you going to sign me? I got you I, a contract. I, you I, I ain't speedy <laughs> like you, but I can run. I'll probably yeah. survive the second hit, then uh, you know, be out for the rest of the season. <laughs> you have a quarterback on your team yes, that sir. you're that you're familiar with. You guys played together. Uh Verlon yes, Reed. Mm -hmm. My understanding is you played together in northern Arizona. So we've got this interesting dynamic where he used to throw balls to you. Now you're throwing plays to him. I'm assuming you're calling the plays. Yeah. Um me and Verlon played together in NAZ and Bows working together as a team. He used to coach me like Speed, I need you to run a route like this. I need you to get to this depth and things like that. So we always click as a teammates. And when we was in practice, I probably was the oldest guy on the team. And I always used to be in front when we used to be like doing gaskets and stuff like that. But he used to always be like one of the players next to me or five yards, 10 yards behind me. But he was always one of the players that were close to me. And I used to be like, man, when I become a coach, I'm for sure signing you, bro, because your, your work habit is amazing. And to have a quarterback that can run like that is great. And his his background is amazing in Ohio. And I just love playing with him. And now I get to coach him and call plays. And he's just like a coach on the field himself. Like, it's a great opportunity to have a veteran quarterback going into the arena game. That's amazing. And I, I'm glad that you have that relationship. But is there ever a time where, because of the relationship that you have, and he used to tell you, hey, Speed, I need you to run it like this, that you throw him a play, he can be like, nah, 
no, I'm not, I'm not running that play. So with him being on the field, he could see things that I don't see. Like he know how to read the coverages and the linebackers and stuff like that. We, we always have meetings now. Like I have zoom meetings with my players now. Um, we have zoom meetings once a month and I also have zoom meetings with my quarterback. So we'd be on the same page when we come in and hit the ground running. Cause you know, we try to win championship out the gate. That's the main goal here. And speaking of that, the Cedar Rapids River Kings are part of the American Indoor Football League. You've got four opponents that you'll be facing this year. The Amarillo Venom and Columbus Lions are not on your schedule. However, mm-hmm. you're gonna you're gonna get real familiar with teams like uh, the Harrisburg Stampede and yep. the Mississippi Raiders and the Albany River Gators. Yeah, you've we got- start off March 16th. We open up with the Missouri Falcons. 6.35 Central Time. It's going to be an expeditious game, so all my players get to play, and then that when I make the final cuts after that game. And that's a home game, correct? Yes, sir. So how, how many players do you get to have on the roster when you play this game? That game, I'd be able to dress 30, and then after that, i cut down to 25, but I get to invite 40 guys to camp. When does camp start? March 3rd, my guys will retire. I mean, my guys will arrive, and then we'll start practice on the 5th. So we had to do physicals and things like that. Your game against the Missouri Falcons that you play at home is uh, that game is considered part of camp, is it not? Because you're still evaluating players. Yes, sir. OK, I think that's a great system, honestly. I mean, you don't see that a ton in indoor football, but to to actually get the chance to see them in game t- game situations like that is hugely helpful to a coach, wouldn't you say? Yes, sir. See, I wanted to do like a joint practice with a team that's close to here, you know, Quad Cities or Bar Stormers to see what kind of guys I have. But I never know how the leads, like, you know, some leads be different, how they do things and the yeah. plays different and our rules are different. So we couldn't do that. So I wanted to like try to get that going. But other than that, we're going to have a, a practice that – to evaluate guys, and we're going to also have an opportunity for them to play in the preseason game to evaluate them more. You used to play for Quad Cities, is that correct? I used to play for Quad Cities and Barstormers. Did you? Okay, so so you you got that relationship that if it you know if if the rules were the same or something like that, you probably could have done something. Oh yeah, That's- I could have. Yeah. Oh, great. I love that. Okay, so let's yeah. t- moving on to your schedule, the regular season schedule. Mm-hmm. Your your first game, a home game, March thirtieth. You've got the Albany Flint River Gators coming into town. Uh, yes, sir. For, for the sake of Cedar Rapids River Kings fans, how fun would a tailgate party between River Kings and River Gators be? I mean, what would that look like? Man, it'd be like a lion and a gator fighting. Have you ever seen the videos when the when the lion jump in the water and snatch the gate out of the water? That's how it's going to be. It's going to hey, be just like that. So, so you, you start out at home, but uh, after that, you've got the entire month of April on the road. Uh, uh-huh. You're going to be traveling to Harrisburg, and then you're going to go play uh, in a place that you've played before in um, Albany, Georgia, mm-hmm. against the River Gators, and then you're going to take on the Mississippi Raiders. Uh, talk to me about how do you as a coach prepare for an entire month on the road like that? See, I love it like that because we get to get most of the games closer to home, like running into the playoffs, especially if we go into the playoffs in first or second place and host the playoff and championship at home. So that's the goal. But I also played against Harrisburg when I was with the Richmond Raiders in the PIFL when they had the team up there that year. So I know the great environment they have up there. And by me being from Atlanta, Georgia, it's going to be amazing to have my family come see me coach in Georgia and, you know, beat up on them guys. And going to Mississippi is going to be a great opportunity to get some of my fans from college in Alabama to come see me play. I also have Coach D.C. He my offensive line coach and D-line coach. He went to Stillman College, too. He graduated a couple of years before I got there. So it's going to be a great opportunity. We're going to turn Mississippi into our homecoming. <laughs> well, that's great. So, so you go to Mississippi and you play them, and then you're come back home for the month of May, and Mississippi's coming to your place. So yes, you play sir. them back to back. Then you have another home game where Harrisburg's coming to town, and then mm-hmm. you're going back to Harrisburg to play them a third time this year. Okay, so you're going to play. You have an eight game schedule. And you're going to play Harrisburg yeah. three times. Does that get boring playing the same opponent or does it just get more exciting? It get exciting because we had to break the tie. If we win out on them, beat them all three games, 
that put us above them. If they, we ain't, ain't going to speak on that because well, I'm not saying they're going to beat us three games, but if they beat us one time, we beat them one time, we had to break a tie. And then it make the whole game interesting. Okay, but then the final game, you're back home mm-hmm. and uh, there's this team coming from Corpus Christi, the Corpus Christi Tritons. And given your schedule, what game do you look forward to the most this season? I'm really taking one day at a time, really. We, we trying to get better 1% every day. We trying to come in here and win. So every game to me is going to be very important because I have a championship on my mind. I'm trying to run into Columbus or, or Amarillo in the playoff because I know them guys are very high horse right now, just like we are. Because, you know, we came out of the IFL, they came out of the CIF, and they came out of the NAL. So as us three top-tier teams, we are looking forward to playing each other in the long run down in the playoffs. So I'm doing whatever I can do to get my guys together and make sure they come in here with a purpose and ready to win day one. So speaking of your guys, I'm going to throw yes, out sir. a few names and I'm asking you to just tell me the first thing you think of when I when I mention these names. Rick Neal Jr. Nightmare. Eats a lot of quarterbacks for lunch. Yes, sir. Danny Hugan Jr. Playmaker. Playmaker, like Speedy Clark. Just like Speedy Clark. Just like Speedy Clark. Cody Barber. The best kicker in the league. That's a lot of words. but, but the best <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. Devontae Brown. Veteran that know the game. Ball hawk. Those are great expressions for these players. So uh, given your roster, let's say you get down to, um, let's say, the last playoff game. Okay. Right? You're down to the wire. Who do you rely on more, your offense or your defense? You know, offense in arena football is is all about offense. But I won a championship because of defense when I was in Duke City because the defense stopped the play against Salina when we played them in 2019. So, you know, defense win games. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, it was a great opportunity to see defense win that game for us. But I put the ball in Verlon's hand. I, I trust Verlon so much that we can make good throws. We can run the ball. We could do whatever we want to with me calling the plays and Verlon on that quarterback and with the nice receiver core I got coming in. Every game I've ever watched, a commentator or an analyst would say, uh-huh. you, you can't teach speed. Now we got a coach whose name is Speedy. What do you think? Can you, as a coach, teach speed? It's speedy world. They're going to get the best training in the world every day. We're going to get fast. We're going to be the fastest team. We're going to hit the ground running every day. Every team going to have to play at our, at our speed because we coming out there and running. Like, we we going hard from, from the beginning of the game to the fat lady saying It's going down all game. The best show on turf. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm, I'm, exci- I'm excited. I'm excited about that. However, I do have a little bit of a grumble, and I'd like an explanation. Uh-huh. The logo ditched the yellow. It's just a grayscale logo. What was the decision behind that? Yeah, we wanted to change the color, uh, take it back to the old Titans color, and add a little gray to it. And I like the Detroit Lions type of look. We got an all gray uniform, look like the Detroit Lions. I like that. I like that style. So Oof. we just wanted to take the yellow out of it and make everything different since they've been gone for like five years. I mean, I love it. I love it. But- Man, that yellow was just, just looks so good. I'm excited to see it. You get that all gray uniform, man. I can't wait to see that, see you guys on the field. It's going to be exciting. What message does Darren Speedy Clark have for the rest of the league? We coming. We coming. I just want y'all to know my boy's ready. We locked in. We're a family here. HBO, help a brother out. That's what we live on. That's what we're about. And we're going to take the championship trophy and bring it to Cedar Rapids. That's our number one goal. Like everybody in my team, everybody in the front office, all my coaches, we ready. Like we've been locked in from day one. Soon I signed a contract to become the head coach here. We've been locked in. Epic. I'm excited, man. Um, you're, you're just getting me so excited for this. <laughs> all right. Final question, my brother. What message do you have for fans of the cedar rapids river keeps knife men y'all be ready y'all the knife men want y'all to turn that building up we're gonna have that party 
in the arena every Saturday. We're going to make sure it's live for you guys. We're going to be scoring touchdowns, averaging 60 points a game. We're going to give y'all the best entertainment that y'all going to ever see. We're going to make sure y'all come back. Bring a friend, bring a friend, and know a friend, and know a friend. And this is going to be fun. We're going to run through this league this year. 2024 is going to be a great year in Cedar Rapids. We ready. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you have heard the hype train from Mr. Darren Speedy Clark, the head coach of the Cedar Rapids River Kings, who's bringing speed and excitement to American indoor football in 2024. Yes, Thank you, Speedy, for joining me. Have a great Thank day. Thank you. You too.